Hello everyone, in this session we will introduce the accounting equation, which is assets equal to liabilities and owner's equity or stockholder's equity. We will define two crucial accounting terms in this equation, assets and liabilities. Understanding these terms is essential for grasping the accounting equation. In the next session, we would look at the equity section and explain the equation as a whole. So before we dive into the equation, we need to understand what is an asset, what is a liability. We will define those terms, we will give examples. And it's very important, it's crucial that you distinguish between assets and, for example, equity. Asset and expenses, liabilities and expenses. And accounting each terms means one thing and one thing only. So you have to have a good understanding of these terms before we dive into the accounting equation. Assets and liabilities are components of the financial statements elements that we discuss under the FASB conceptual framework. At the end of this recording, we will work a multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. So let's start by defining assets. Assets are resources that a business owns or controls. You don't have to own an asset as long as you can use it to your own end. It's still an asset with the expectation that these resources provide future economic benefit. So an asset is something that a company can use to do what? To provide itself some sort of a future economic benefit, usually to generate revenue, to generate profit, to generate more cash. Assets are diverse in nature. So each company might have different type of assets, depending on your business. And assets can range from physical items, like a building, a vehicle, inventory, and we're gonna see some examples, to intangible assets, assets that lack physical existence, like certain rights, and we'll talk about those in a separate recording. Now, when you think of assets, you always think of cash, and that's the easiest way to explain the concept of asset. Under assets, we have something called cash, and we are all familiar with cash. Why? Because cash is one of the best resources that if you have, you can use to provide future economic benefit. You can hire employees, you can buy goods and services to resell them. So cash is the best asset. It's the most liquid and we'll talk about that later. So assets are essential components of the company's financial health, health and operational capacity. No company can operate without assets. Assets are the tools. For example, right now, I am preparing this recording. I'm using a laptop, I'm using my computer, I'm using a screen. All these are assets to my business. Why? Because they're helping me perform my job. They're helping me deliver a product to you as a customer. For example, the office where I'm sitting is also an asset for me. And we're gonna look at examples of assets. Now what you need to know is assets are listed on the balance sheet. And we'll, we'll discuss the balance sheet later on. And the balance sheet equation is the accountant equation that I said we're gonna be discussing in this session. Assets equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. And we'll get to, that, to this equation later as we define assets separately, liabilities separately, and equity separately, then we will put it all together. Now within assets, we're gonna differentiate. So assets, we could have current, we have two types of assets. We're gonna just differentiate them for now really briefly, current assets. Current assets are assets that are expected to be converted into cash or used up within one year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. So any asset that we are going to use, consume, convert to cash is considered a current asset. What are we discussing here? What are some examples of current assets? 
Cash is a current asset because cash is already cash is the most liquid. Liquid means how fast can you turn an asset into cash? And the more the faster you can do it, the more liquid is the asset. Now, if, it, if you have the cash itself, that's the most liquid because it's readily available for use in operation or investment. So you could use cash to do anything. Another asset that's important that we need to explain a little bit further now is something called accounts receivable. And this is related to the revenue recognition principle that we looked at in the prior session. Remember in the prior session, we looked at the revenue recognition principle. And what does the revenue recognition principle state? It state that you can recognize revenue. Simply put, you can increase revenue when you perform the work. So if you want to increase revenue and you did not receive cash, let's assume you performed a service and the client did not pay you cash. What do they do? Well, they are rather than giving you cash, rather than giving you cash, they will promise to pay. Promise to pay is the account receivable. Money owed to the company by customers who have purchased goods or services on credit. So you perform the work, they did not pay you. Well, that's not good, but they promise to pay and you expect them to pay. Therefore, you have a valid promise. Therefore, now what you have is an asset called accounts receivable. That's another asset. And the reason it's a current asset, because you expect the client to pay you within one year. That's why it's a current asset. Inventory. Now, don't get hung on whether it's a current asset or not. I just wanted to kind of tell you we have a diverse type of assets. Inventory. What is inventory? Inventory are goods available for sale to customers. Usually retailers like Walmart, stores that sell goods, that sells, for example, they sell chairs, they sell tables, they sell chocolate bars. What they do, they buy, they buy it first. When they buy it, it's inventory, then they resell it. So goods available for sale to customers. Other assets are supplies. Well, you need supplies. You need pens, pencils, papers for the printers to operate your business. Items used in the normal course of business operation. Those are also current asset because you expect to use them shortly. Again, don't worry whether it's current or not. I just wanted to kind of break it down rather than give you one list of assets. Just we have current assets. We also have non-current. Non-current assets are long-term. Long-term means those are the assets that are expected to stay with us longer than a year. They're not expected to be sold. They're not expected to be converted to cash. And usually when we think of them, we think of something called property, plant, and equipment. Or for short, it's known as PPNE. Those assets such as land, building, machinery, vehicles, warehouses, equipment, those assets, when you buy a building, you expect to have the building for several years. When you buy a machinery, you expect that machinery to service you for several years. And those are tangible. Tangible means you can see them, you can touch them. Those are also assets, but we call them non-current or long-term because they serve the company for several years and they are used in producing goods and services used in operation. We also, we could have what's called long-term investments. Long-term investments is when you buy stocks and bonds of other companies and you plan to hold them more than a year. Just know you don't have to worry about this for now for financial accounting, for long-term assets, property, plant, and equipment. So I hope at this point, you know what assets are. Assets are resources that's gonna help the company generate benefit, generate profit. And no company can exist without assets. No individual can exist without assets. You have assets. You have money. You have a computer. You have your cell phone. Those are your personal assets. So we, we're kind of done with assets for now. Let's move to the second term, liabilities. If I want to define liability with one word, I will define liability as debt. Debt. We are all familiar with debt. Debt represents... Liabilities represent a company's obligation to external parties. When you have a debt, what does that mean? That means you have to pay someone. Why do you have to pay someone? Because you either borrowed money from them, because you purchased goods or services from them. Something happened, and as a result, you incur the debt. Think about it. If you have a debt, it's because something happened in the past, and you owe someone 
something. That's what liabilities are. These obligations arise from past transaction or events. Something happened in the past. And when you have a liability, think about what, what's expected of you. You are required to provide an asset, product, or services in the future. If you have a debt, what do you have to do in the future? You have to pay off this debt. Usually you pay it off with cash. Now certain that you can give the you can give the debtor some product or you can provide them a service, but 99% of the time you pay off your debt with cash. Now, liabilities are simply put creditors claim on the company's asset. Why? Because if 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 the individuals, if the companies that you owe them money that you did not pay them, they can take your asset. They have a claim on your asset. You have a responsibility to do what? To take your assets and pay off your debt. Otherwise, the liabilities, the debtors have a claim on your asset. They always do because you owe them money. Now, liabilities also can be broken down into two groups, current and non-current, which is short-term and long-term. Same concept, any debt that you're gonna settle it means pay within one year or the operating cycle, don't worry about the operating cycle for now, is considered current or short term. What could be some examples of current liabilities? Well, we have an account called accounts payable. What is accounts payable? Think about companies. How do companies operate? When you buy goods or supplies, most of the time in the real world, businesses pay later. So you purchase something now and you pay later most businesses that's what they do you get what you need now and the supplier will give you 30 days they will send you a bill and they would say you owe us this money pay us so amount owed to suppliers for goods or services purchase on credit this is a common liability for businesses that operate on a credit basis and most businesses operate on credit basis just like when you sell your goods you get a promise to be paid when you buy goods you also promise the other party you will pay them so this is what accounts payable and this is one of the most common current liabilities. Why it's current? Because you expect it to pay your bill within 30 or 60 days, less than a year. Wages payable. Salaries and wages owed to employees for work performed. So when your employees worked for you and you have not paid them yet, you have a liability. It's called wages payable. Now, how do I know it's a liability? It has the word payable. Notice accounts payable, wages payable. So if you see the word payable, it's a good chance you are dealing with a liability. Payable means you have to pay it. If you have to pay it, it means you owe it. If you owe it, it's a liability. Also, if your employee worked for you, they expect to be paid less than a year. They cannot, they're not going to wait longer than a year. You could have taxes payable. Taxes owed to governmental authorities, such as income tax, sales tax, or property tax. If you owe the government money, believe me, they want their money within one year. Therefore, it's a current liability. Notice the word payable. Now you notice you could have rent payable. If you owe your rent, if you are behind your rent, it becomes a liability. You could have utilities payable. If you're behind on your utilities and you cannot pay your bill, it becomes utility payables. Also, we have short-term loans payable. Uh, short-term loans payable, or sometimes it's called the technical words is notes payable. Maybe you see it in your textbook is notes payable. Notes payable is the same thing as a loan. But this loan will have to be paid within one year. Because you, you could have a loan that's short term. You could have a loan that's long term. So another example of liabilities, specifically short term liabilities, are short term loans payable. Is this a, a complete list of current liabilities and the answer is absolutely not absolutely not this is just a short list anytime you owe money and you have to pay this money any doesn't have to be money anytime you owes an obligation usually money or sometimes you have to perform a service we'll see that later on that's a liability now you have current and we have non-current non-current are long-term liabilities those are liabilities that are due beyond one year. In other words, you owe the money, but you don't have to pay the whole thing within one year. You have longer than a year. A typical example of it is long-term loans and notes payable. 
Remember, we have loans that are, we have short-term loans. We, we looked at it on the prior slides. Or you could have a loan, and that loan is for five years, for three years, for seven years, for 30 years. It goes beyond one year. It's a loan, but it's long-term. Long-term loan or long-term notes payable. Nevertheless, it's a liability. We have another type of debt called bonds payable, which we'll talk about later on. Similar to a loan, those are debt securities issued by a company, typically with the payment term more than a year. Just know that they are bonds payable. Again, for now, you don't have to worry about it. All what we worry about in financial accounting is long-term loans or long-term notes payable. Just know there are other types. There are leases that are long-term, but I don't want to get you uh, involved in topics that you don't have to know you don't you don't have to worry about now now it's important to manage your liabilities properly liabilities are that it's crucial for your financial health and stability because if you cannot pay off your liabilities proper handling of liabilities make make sure that the company can meet its obligation as they come due why because you want to avoid default. If you cannot pay off your liabilities, simply put, your creditors can put you out of business. You have to have good credit standing with liabilities. Liabilities, you need to have good cash flow management. You have enough cash or liquid asset to pay off your liabilities. Balancing the use of debt to finance operation and growth while maintaining a manageable level of debt relative to equity. You cannot have too much debt because if you have too much debt, you, you could get into trouble because you cannot pay it. Also, the problem when you have that is you have to adhere to legal and regulatory requirements related to taxes, wages, and other obligation. So sometime, banks, creditors, they can impose compliance on you, compliance, mandatory compliance. For example, you, you cannot have a debt above a certain amount. We'll talk about those later on. But it's very important for companies to manage their liabilities properly, otherwise they could go out of business. Liabilities are also listed on the balance sheet. Remember what I told you, assets equal liabilities plus equity is the balance sheet. And what we did in this session is we defined what assets are, we defined what liabilities are, and we broke them into current and non-current. And why do we break them into current and non-current? Because it's going to help stakeholders, anyone that's interested in your company, understand the nature of your assets, the nature of your liabilities, your obligation. But for now, we don't have to break them down. All that we have to know for now, what's the definition of an asset? What's the definition of liabilities? Because assets equal to liabilities plus equity. So the only missing part of this accounting equation that we have not defined yet is equity or owner's equity. Now, I'm setting the ground for the next session. You guessed it. In the next session, I'm going to define the equity, but I'm going to show you what equity is right now. If I rearrange this formula, if I say equity equal to what? Equity equal to assets minus liabilities. That's all. So if I want to re if I want to just kind of isolate equity, equity equal to assets minus liabilities. So if I have $100 in assets and $30 in liabilities, I can say my equity is $70. Now, yes, I just figured out what equity is by knowing how much assets I have and how much liabilities I have. But what does it mean? What is equity? And this is what we will need to discuss in depth in the next session. Because equity, it's going to complete the accounting equation. It's going to complete the picture of the balance sheet. But to summarize, assets are resources, are th good things that you have that you're going to use to run your business. Liabilities are obligations, debt that you owe. The difference between what you have and what you owe is called your equity. And that's all what you need to know for now, because in the next session, we will focus on equity much, much more in depth. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A software company provides services on credit worth 10000 How will this transaction be recorded? So if a company provided services on credit means they did not get the cash. What would happen? What would happen? Do we increase cash and increase equity? Would cash be affected if we provided services on credit let's think about it would that be affected and the answer is no because we did not get the cash so this is out 
increase in account receivable and increase in equity. Let's look at the first section, increase in account receivable. Do you think this would happen? Increase in account receivable, is this true? And the answer is yes, remember what I said. Account receivable is when you provide a service and you don't get paid. The other party says, I promise to pay you. If they promise to pay you, you're going to increase account receivable. Now, although I don't know anything about equity, I'm going to keep this B as, an op as a good option. Increase in accounts payable. Well, for the software company, do I have to pay anything? Absolutely not. If I provided the service, I expect to be paid. Therefore, C is out. D, increase in cash. Again, we said no cash is involved because I just provided the service. I don't see that cash is involved. So I would say B is the best answer. Now, it says increase in account receivable and increase in equity. What does that mean? That we did not define yet. Remember, in the next session, we look at equity. But all what I wanted from this question is can you identify account receivable and what is account receivable it's when you provide a service when you perform work and the other party don't pay immediately they promise they promise to pay you in the future when they promise to pay you in the future you have an account receivable however you can increase your revenue now okay you, don't, you didn't get the cash although you get your revenue what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures and look at additional multiple choice additional lectures additional resources that's going to help you understand the accounting equation assets equal to liabilities plus equity all what we did in this session is defined asset defined liabilities and actually kind of briefly says equity is asset minus liabilities but we're going to have to spend quite a bit of time on the word equity to complete the picture on to the next lecture invest in yourself good luck study hard this is an important topic in accounting